Well, good morning. And uh, for a bit of a disclaimer, I guess you might say, I do not know how today's episode is going to go. Uh, I'm thinking of uh, possibly uh, trying to edit and produce this entire episode in Adobe Premiere Pro. And that's going to take me probably twice as long to get everything edited out as, as normal. Uh, because I'm not used to it. But I have to force myself to get used to it. And it's not that the Premiere Pro will not uh, do everything that the Cyberlink pro program will do. Oh, speaking of Cyberlink, uh, Power Director, I got a, a message from P Power Director. I'd, I'd send a, a message off, I think it was on Friday. Well, they replied yesterday. And the message that I sent them was, is there any way that I can produce and, and, uh, and uh, like render an, an 8K video using uh, PowerDirector because it's so PowerDirector is so easy to use compared with Premiere Pro. Now Premiere Pro is much more professional. There's no question about it. I think you can probably do more with Premiere Pro in a better quality way. In fact, a couple of viewers have mentioned how they thought the quality of the video that was produced in, pre, in that I produced in Premiere Pro seemed to be better. The color seemed to be better. And that's quite possible. Uh, I didn't notice that, but uh, but they did. So so that was kind of encouraging. Uh, <clears throat> and 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 for those of you, uh, like I got a message this morning, and somebody that I read this morning, I just replied back to it. Somebody was talking about uh, how they watch the, these episodes on their iPad. And okay, to you, to you folks, that's not going to make any difference. Now let's get on with with uh, stuff that's to do with the model ship. Uh, just want to let you know that today's episode may be short, or if it is short, uh, this is why. It's because I'm planning to force myself, as I said, use Premiere Pro because I have to, I have to start using that. Either that, or I may as well cancel the subscription because it's costing almost a dollar a day to have it. And if I'm not using it, I mean, why have it? Uh, okay, like I say, enough of that. Now, uh, what I've been thinking of doing today, and I don't know if I'm going to do it yet, is uh, uh, contacting the hobby store and uh, and just checking on the uh, Iowa, the availability of the Iowa or the Missouri. At the moment, as far as I know, neither one are here in Winnipeg at the moment. And as near as I can tell, if I go on Amazon, uh, the only place that's selling uh, uh, the Missouri is uh, someplace uh, over in Europe. Uh, yeah, I forget, Poland or somewhere it has to come out of. Well, you know, I got, I got nothing against, uh, you know, Europe. <laughs> in fact, uh, it seems to me that... that uh, there seems to be more modelers in, in the UK than there is here in Canada by quite a bit. Uh, a lot of the real good modeling episodes uh, or, or videos are coming out of uh, the UK. Um, anyway, uh, I'm starting to think out loud here again. Uh, let's, let's get going with today. I don't think I'll be doing any 8K shooting today, so uh, you don't need to worry about that. Uh, yeah, let's, let's just... Uh, Let's just try and get going here. And uh, What I will be doing, though, is I'll be putting the macro lens on when I try to repair this. That was sure too bad. That was, that was so stupid. Some, somebody thought that maybe I'd use the file. But actually, what I was doing was I was, I was sanding with, with this sanding stick at the time. And I guess I just got... It, it was right about the time that I was, thought I was done. I was thinking, oh, I'll, I'll just do a little bit more here. And I... And I just pushed too hard and it's, it snapped it off. Yeah, um, maybe there was a fracture already in the plastic. Actually, probably what it was, was the, the constant micro-flexing back and forth. It just slowly, you know, made itself weak. Because I don't think I was pressing that particularly hard when I was doing it. But I guess I, uh, okay, my uh, compulsive poking disorder is taking, taking over here and I better... Uh, have another sip of coffee and press the uh, stop button. 
Okay, I will be putting the macro lens on here in a minute. But I think the easiest way to get the fracture lined up is to try and find the seam. If I haven't... Oh, no, no, on this piece here, it's kind of hard to see where it, where it was. And, of course, there's, there's two ways it can go. Okay, I, I do believe I see it right on the top there. So then what I would do is I would I would turn this one so that we find the seam on the top. Okay, now there's 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 a seam right there. You can you can see it. But it it could be that it's the bottom seam, if you know what I mean. In other words, we have to turn it turn it around 180 degrees to get it to match up. So right now I have a 50/50 chance of getting it basically right, if you know what I mean. Okay. Um, I'm probably going to find a better way to do this. And, uh, yeah, I've actually thought of a way. I think, I think if I was to put one piece in the helping hands and the other piece in, locked in a tweezer, uh, that is after I've determined the correct position to go in, and then have the uh, have it held together, and maybe just put the smallest amount of CA, or not CA, but uh, to me extra thin, to dissolve the plastics together. So if I put too much, what's going to happen is the, uh, the the I'm going to end up with a little bulge right there, which I guess I could sand away. Now there are only six of these. It's not like there was an extra one. Uh, there's there's only six. Now the other option is to just use this piece right here, and uh, and then have one of the guns would have a short barrel. But I want to sort of have the fun of seeing if I can't just you know get this back together. And and we will use the macro lens. We'll we'll, we'll move right in. And uh, <laughs> yeah, you'll be seeing it better than me. Now, in a way, when I use this thing, I almost feel like I'm cheating because I'm actually eight times closer than than we were with the, when I am with the macro lens. So I'm able to see the seam very, very clearly, even though I sanded a lot of it away. And so I can just carefully rotate this thing here. Okay, now I do believe that that. Let me double check. Yeah. Okay, so so though I got the two two seams in question perfectly lined up. Just let me move you in a little bit. I can move you in a little bit, but not very much. Okay. Now. I, I'm thinking what what's going to happen is when when I put this in the helping hands, I'm not going to be able to see it like this. In fact, in fact, what I what I could probably do in in this case is that I would be able to put the fracture together without even seeing the seams because there are other defining you know cracks that sort of show up. Okay. Okay, that that's it right there. That's 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 sort of perfect, you might say. It, it's just it's just working its way together and if I, you know, it's almost a perfect match. It's sort of like when you break the handle off of a china cup, you know, and you you're trying to glue it back together, you you suddenly feel it sort of lock into the right spot. And then you hope to goodness that you're going to be able to do the same thing again after you get the glue in there. Um, yeah, th this this is going to work good. So now what what I want to do is just leave it like that. 
And uh, if I could put a little mark on the top of each one of these pieces with a felt marker, and my Sharpies are pretty much all dried off, uh, then when I put it in the helping hands, oh, where's my felt marker? Yeah, I think my blue one is about as, it's about the best. Now just, just go right on the top there. And right on the top here. Okay, I should be able to see that. Okay, so I know that, that those two seams go together and I won't have it turned 180 degrees the wrong way, if you know what I'm getting at here. Am I beating this to death? Well, I'm having fun beating it to death. Now, this is where I'm going to be wanting to try and put on the tiniest little bit of extra thin. Uh, I'm, I'm taking this shot so that you can see how I've got it all set up because I, I know that after I get using the macro lens here, you're not going to be able to know what's going on other than you're going to be able to see in real close. And uh, I, I pretty much got it, I pretty much got it right. Uh, so the idea is I'm going to be lifting it up, putting the glue on, and then letting it back down, hopefully in the right place. And if it's not right, well, it's, it's no big deal, right? I mean, then we'll have a short barrel. Or I could extrude a piece of plastic, but I, I don't think I'd bother. Anyway, let's, let's see what we can do here. Okay, now the hard part is going to be to, to lift this up and, uh, and then let it back down in the right place. I'm thinking uh, maybe what I should be doing is uh, applying the glue to the top portion, not the bottom portion. I was originally thinking of putting a little, a little bit of glue on the... I think maybe what I'll do is I'll try, I'll try and put it on the on the top part. Okay, just hang on a second here. See if I can very, very carefully lift this up. Okay, and then have it come back down in the same place again. I might have to readjust it. Okay, so here we go. I've sampled a little bit of glue. I'll lift it up. Put it down. Now, did we actually get any? It almost looks like there's no glue in there. Let's just try it again here and see if see what happens when I pull it apart. Oh, it's not coming apart. You know what? I think we sort of got it there. I wonder if we could just paint this a little bit here. Okay, I think that if there if there's any voids in that crack, the extra thin will have wicked its way in. Now let's just leave that for a while, see what happens. Okay, probably about an hour or more has passed. I haven't been keeping track of the time, but uh, it's getting on, and uh, you know what happens Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Well, today is Wednesday. Anyway, I have cut another barrel out of the fret or sprue, and I'm going to try. I'm going to try and do it differently. I'll, I'll see if I can do it on camera. I might be able to. I mean, that's. I enjoy doing that. Uh, you're probably sick of hearing me say that, but it's it's true. And rather than using the file and the sanding disc, I'm going to uh, use a scraper and see if we can't just scrape that seam off. Now, now this particular barrel does not seem to be as well 
made or poured or formed as the uh, as the other one that is in the uh, helping hands here. Uh, <clears throat> sorry, I'm thinking out loud again. I can't think and talk at the same time, right? Okay, so let's uh, let's put the macro lens on and uh, do two things. First, we're going to try and carefully. Oh, where's my screwdriver? I knew I'd find it eventually. Now it seems to me the last time I tried this, we had a disaster, didn't? Didn't I go to to open this up with a screwdriver and I I bump something and end up breaking it? So let's let's try and not have that happen this time. Okay, I realize that this is not the macro lens, but it is coming. We'll use it when we scrape the barrel. Now, very carefully here. The idea is not to put any stress on the fracture. Okay. We got it. We got it. <laughs> I was just noticing when I, <clears throat> excuse me, when I pulled the screwdriver out of the tweezer, it sort of flipped this way. I could have accidentally hit her. Anyway, let's not let's not test it to see how strong it is. Uh, we'll, we'll check it out later. Let's just sort of get it out of the way here carefully. And uh, yeah, very carefully. It's a little bit bent. <clears throat> I wonder if I can straighten that. Well, we'll worry about it later. Let's uh, try our scraper idea. Okay, this is the plan. If I keep the barrel right over top, and we're a little black dot right here, it should be in focus. Now, I'm going to have to hold it down, so that means I'm going to be covering part of it. Now, where's that flashing? Okay, the flashing is right there. Now, let me check the monitor. Are we still in, in focus here? Ah, not bad. Okay, now, I should be able to just scrape that off. I kind of turn the barrel as I'm doing this. Now there's a bit of a thing on the end of the muscle there. Muscle break or whatever they call it. Okay. Let's just let's rotate it over now. Look at the other side. Right there, I think I got the flashing up. Okay, how's that look here? Just turn it around. I know I did did this scraper idea on the on the uh, big barrels on the on the hood. I think no, it wasn't the hood. It'd be the Bismarck because on the hood we had the uh, brass barrels. Okay. 
Okay, I think that's it. You know, I, I think the idea works pretty good. It's a little bit, a little bit ragged here. Yeah, I think the idea works works good on these small barrels, and they're putting less stress on them than going back and forth with it with a sanding stick on the end. At least that's that's just my opinion. At least it worked on this one. Let's let's quit while we the quitting's good. And speaking of quitting, thanks for watching everybody. And all being well, we'll be seeing you tomorrow. <laughs>